Dive into God's Word. Dig a little deeper. Discover the Bible's message for you today. Pathway to Paradise Ministries presents Deeper, your daily Bible study with Dr. Tim Rumsey and Pastor David Salazar. Hello and thank you for joining us on Deeper, your daily Bible study. Uh, I am David Salazar and with me is Dr. Tim Ramsey and together we'll study today's lesson for Friday, June 14. We have titled this lesson, uh, Rejoicing in the Lord, as we feel that it is important to know that as we walk with Him, as we build families of faith, there is that rejoicing in the Lord that will come uh, along with that choice and that desire to follow Him. But before we start, before we open God's Word, we ask that you will join us as we pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for another day that we have to come and study your Word. We ask that those these few minutes that we're going to continue, or we're going to dive into your Word, that they may be profitable to our lives, that we may be blessed by the reading of the Scriptures, and that we see in the example in the Bible of how to rejoice in, in the Lord, that we may really be able to experience that in our lives so that our families may have true joy and rejoice in the Lord as an experience that we can share with others as well. We thank you for all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Today, um, we uh, the lesson brought um, suggested that some of us should study the <clears throat> uh, this chapter in this little book called Steps of Christ, uh, Rejoicing in the Lord. And so we are using that uh, title to our finish our week in a high note, be able to finish this week that has, uh, I mean, it's been a blessing and we certainly have been blessed by studying God's word, but, you know, to really leave it or feel that we need to finish this week in this concept of how to rejoice in the Lord and what uh, can prevent us from experiencing that as well. Uh, let's start by reading uh, in Psalms 1611. And I'll ask Tim, if you don't mind reading for us this, this beautiful verse there, in Psalm 1611. Thou wilt show me the path of life, and thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Beautiful little mm. promise there. Amen. Now, what is the only source of true and lasting joy in this, according to this verse? What is really the only thing that can give us that, that lasting joy that we don't get it from anywhere else? It only comes from the presence of Christ um, living within us. Amen. And that is a concept that uh, time and time again, people, we seem to forget. Uh, we feel that having or how to have joy is by having a, some, a constant ex excitable thing in our lives. You know, whether it's music, sports, movies, uh, you know, intimacy, whatever. You know, we always want to be stimulated. But that's not really joy. That's not really what brings purpose and happiness to our lives is the presence of Christ. And uh, this is, you know, what we have to ask ourselves. Is Christ living in my life? Is Christ living in my family? Um, you know, many times I've hear, uh, and, you know, there are some reasons sometimes there is a, some sort of a valid complaint or concern when uh, the families are you know, come to me and ask me, you know, why is it my, my husband never takes us to for a vacation, you know, and we're always, you know, not able to enjoy, have a time to enjoy our family. And sometimes, you know, the, those type of things that happened um, are, are certainly a problem, but uh, more important than taking time for vacation, being able to spend time with, you know, quality time with your family, which is important, but more important than any of that, it's really, is Christ living in your heart? You know, is Christ living in your family? Have you uh, given your heart a chance for Christ to enter? Or is he still knocking on the door to your heart? I mean, these are the things that we have to consider. And so uh, there is a quote from Spirit Prophecy, Steps of Christ, page 116, that says, If we do represent Christ, we shall make his service appear attractive as it really is. Christians who gather up gloom and sadness to their souls and murmur and complain are giving to others a false representation of God and the Christian life. They give the impression that God is not pleased to have his children happy, and in this they bear false witness against our Heavenly Father. So, you know, uh, I think that 
even if you have a limited resources and you're, you know, maybe you don't, you may not have, you may have a hard life of, of adversity and trials, but Christ himself, you know, has shown in his, in his own example, he got a, he was a poor person. He didn't have money. He didn't have wealth. He didn't possess as a man, any, any time of, you know, of, uh, of leisure. He had to work hard, but he made his life a happy life. He made his life, his daily chores joyful because because the presence of God the Father was with him. And so today, you know, instead of complaining, we should look into Christ and how Christ can give us that experience where even in the midst of our work or duty or, or burdens, we can have joy. We can really have that lasting, uh, happy experience that God wants, you know. And, and I think this is why many times we have seen our families, you know, Think of Christians and their children. Things of the parents of like, uh, you know, they are they are always gloom. You know, there is always murmur, complaining. You know, sadness is a life of a Christian, and that is not how it is. You know, it is important. Uh, you know, but another the, topic. Yeah, go ahead, Tim. Yeah, I was just going to say one of the things that we especially need to be on guard against is is doubting and the extension of that, which is unbelief. In Luke chapter twelve, verse twenty nine, Jesus says, "Seek not ye what you shall eat." or what you shall drink, neither be you of doubtful mind. And this, of course, is something that we all face from time to time. We have doubts, we have questions, we have uncertainties, but uh, the Bible counsels us and encourages us uh, not to give way to these doubts, to these questions that we may have uh, occasionally or in some circumstances about God's love or his justice and so forth. A similar passage is in Hebrews chapter 3, verse 12, which says, Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. So we're we're talking about rejoicing the Lord, but one of the things that can very quickly prevent us from experiencing Mm -hmm. that or destroy the joy that we have is by giving way to doubt. Um, And again, it's something that we all have from time to time, but what do I do with it? Do I give it to Christ? Do I ask him to uh, take the place of that doubt and substitute it with faith? Or do I begin dwelling and focusing on these doubts? If we do that, we're headed down a dark road. Absolutely. Uh, Doubt is the most effective way of Satan to bring our confidence in the Lord down. I mean, he wants constantly for us to doubt in God, in his word, and his promises. And that's why uh, we have to, as you mentioned, we have to guard ourselves to not uh, allow unbelief and doubt to creep into our minds when it comes to the purpose for our lives of why, you know, God has given us instruction in a certain specific way. Uh, oftentimes I, 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 I hear people usually reasoning out, you know, by worldly arguments by by secular thinking uh, why we're not to follow counsel you know why we are to you know make your you know teach your children allow the children to continue in a course of life or choice of education that goes contrary to the lord and it's really an argument that started with a small question or doubt in their minds of the parents of, of the you know the families and so it is very important that you know that we keep this in mind doubt will lead us into unbelief and unbelief will take that joy that presence of god out of our lives now let's go to read uh, matthew chapter 6 verse 31 and 34 and uh let's read there these verses that can give us this you know another concept of what uh how we can uh you know have joy in our lives can you read it for us? Do you have Matthew 6, 31? Sure. Tim? I do. Okay. Jesus is speaking, and he says, Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. Your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself, sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Uh, Wonderful advice from Jesus here, isn't it? About what we should focus on. Exactly. I mean, you actually, if we read this, you know, think about it. How many of us have really put this to our daily experience? 
you know uh i'm not talking about not you know some people take these verses and 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 excuse their lack of planning the lack of um ambition mm -hmm. in you know providing for their families and that's completely out of context but uh let's you know we have to apply this in our daily walk with the lord what drives you to work every day what really drives you to uh to you do your you know your chores is it the sense of um uh, you know following the lord and and showing to others christ in you i mean have you seek first the kingdom of god and is in your heart that is hard to to, to fulfill the will of God in your life that makes you responsible, that makes you happy, that makes you an effective worker, that makes you an effective friend, an effective husband? Or is it, you know, are you seeking really after money, after wealth, after, you know, the clothing, food, whatever it is? Are you, you know, and this is the point, you know, what really does your heart seek? Daily death to ourselves is necessary. If, you know, there is no experience of true, genuine conversion, a connection with Christ, unless there's a, a daily dying to yourself. And that is, that is, and the way you die is not about asking the Lord to just, you know, I mean, you, yes, you can ask the Lord to, for your, yourself to die, but it's really seeking him first. You know, that's why it says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And all the other things will come as a result of that. I mean, and listen, I'm telling you, the, you know, what makes you an effective worker is not going to be your desire for money. It's going to be a desire to please the Lord, you know? And, and that's why I, I believe that if we were to train your children and we are to bring them to the knowledge of Christ and, and, and really show them the, you know, what who Christ is, as it says, all things will come as a result of that. Um, but, you know, that's why practically, you know, let's put it in practice, how we can apply this in our lives. Uh, each family has to, you know, resolves that. How do I teach my children practically how to put God first? If they see me, you know, pursuing money and wealth and forsaking the Lord, you know, what happens on our Sabbath days, you know? And I think this is like, this question should be asked, you know, to ourselves. Uh, on the Sabbath day, do I spend, do I enjoy, you know, spending time with God and his word? Do I spend time serving others? Do I spend time and enjoy uh, singing, you know, hymns and, and, and praises to the Lord? Do I go to church with a purpose to to bring, you know, others to the gospel, to to bring, you know, be a service to someone else? Or or to me, going to church is a custom, a tradition, and I drag myself to church every Sabbath. You know, you see what I'm saying? It, it, these things is how really we have made our religion appear either as a false concept or as a true concept to our children, our families. Um, but That's anyway, right. let's really, really, let's move on to the last point here let's read in first samuel 7 12 because time really is flying <laughs> so if you don't mind tim reading for us the last verse here for today now Sam samuel took a stone and set it between mizpah and shen and called the name of it ebenezer saying hitherto hath the lord helped us a final thing that can help us rejoice in the lord and do that consistently is to remember how god has led us in the past and uh, we may not have a physical stone set up in our house but uh, you know, it might not be a bad idea either. Something that can remind you about how God has led your family in the past. We all have experiences that we, uh, it is our privilege to remember, um, that we need to remember that can build faith in us and, and in our children as well. That we know that God has guided us this far. Uh, he will not leave us uh, between here and the rest of the journey. Amen. What a blessing it is. Let's we you know, not forget our, 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 you know, our past. Let's not forget how the Lord has been leading us to this point and have that confidence that God will indeed uh, provide for our families joy and peace and everlasting uh, happiness that will not end here, but will continue through eternity. Well, this is it for today. We look forward to studying with you tomorrow here on Deeper. Have a happy and blessed Sabbath. Deeper is a production of Pathway to Paradise Ministries. For more Bible study resources, including books, DVDs, and study guides, visit pathwaytoparadise.org or call toll-free 855-HIS-TRUTH. To support this ministry with your tax-deductible contribution, visit pathwaytoparadise.org or call toll-free 855-HIS-TRUTH. That's 855-447-8788.